So why would this grown man eat all his meals off a tiny dinosaur plate designed for a five-year-old? I don't know, maybe the T-Rex makes his carrots taste like danger, but here's why A.J. Jacobs did it. He wanted to become the healthiest man alive, and eating from smaller plates forces you to cut down on portion size. It's just one of the things that A.J. did during his two-year quest for maximal health. I, for instance, tried uh, juice cleansing and, uh, and colonic irrigation, and I did not like the feeling on either end. He tried dozens of exercise fads from the caveman workout. We climbed trees, we threw boulders, chased after squirrels. To stroller sizing, yes, stroller sizing, while his kid was actually in the stroller. Now, some of the things AJ discovered about the body and what it needs to stay healthy may surprise you. He's collected them all in his new book called Drop Dead Healthy, because here's the thing. AJ is known as an immersion journalist. A year's worth of hair right here. He said, he said you were, but I didn't believe it. Picks an extreme way of life, commits to it for a year, sometimes more, and writes a book about it. Back in 04, it was The Know-It-All, where he tested the limits of his intelligence by reading the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. It was meat pies. Way to go, AJ! Next, it was the year of living biblically. AJ followed every rule in the Bible as literally as possible to find out what's good in it and what no longer makes sense for the 21st century. And now that he's tackled his physical health, he's finally completed the last leg of his self-improvement triathlon. And please welcome back to the show our good friend, AJ Jacob. Hey, man. Great to see you. Great to see you. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm well, man. I love when you come on the show because you spend this, you spend this big chunk... Oh, hey, it's nice to see you, but you spend this big chunk <laughs> of time tackling something significant and then get to report on it. There you go. That's my... Uh, I try to immerse myself in my project. Yeah, what, what kickstarted... The, I mean, a one man's humble quest for bodily perfection. So it wasn't just healthy, it was perfection you are going for. Uh, yeah, this one started because three years ago I was in terrible shape. I was what they call skinny fat. So I uh, looked like a snake that had swallowed a goat. And, uh, <laughs> and my wife said to me, I don't want to be a, a widow in my 40s. You've got to get in shape. And so I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it like my other projects. I'm going to go all in. Wait a second. So your wife looked at you one day and what, you were just walking around your briefs and she said, AJ, fix that? Like <laughs> <laughs> because nobody wants to hear that from someone who's supposed to love <laughs> Well, yeah, she had a whole repertoire. She would call me Buddha. She would say, are you four months pregnant? Uh, and, uh, but she also, I, went, I got hospitalized with pneumonia, and that sort of kicked it off as well. She, was, she got very nervous about my health. I was in terrible shape, never went to the gym. Uh, I would get out of breath playing hide-and-seek with my kids. So, uh, so this was uh, sort of the catalyst, and, and I went all in. I tried to revamp my diet and exercise and sleep, stress level, sex, posture. And by the way, you look fantastic. Thank you, thank you. You've done it, and you didn't even write a book about it. No, I didn't write a book. Um, but it's crazy how it becomes an addiction, the idea of wanting to be really healthy. Right. You know, and tr trying to find the system. For me, it started with diet, and then diet, I upped how many times I played hockey and then tried to go to the gym. But it started with diet. So how did you... There's so many different ways one can achieve bodily perfection. How did you break down your immersion. I'm going to start with one thing. I'm going to address one part of my body first. How did you do it? That's right. I tried to address it body part by body part. And I also uh, started with diet and exercise. Uh, for exercise, I wanted to try out every uh, different kind of regimen there is because I'd never been to the gym. So I went to the gym. I did this thing called CrossFit, which oh, is hardcore. Flipping tires and yeah, craziness. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Their mascot is called Pukey. So that <laughs> gives you an idea. Like, that's a successful workout. Uh, but then I tried, you know, everything. I tried pole dancing is very popular at my gym. So I thought I'd give that a shot. I was impressed. It takes a lot of upper body strength. Oh, so you were on the pole. You weren't just throwing singles. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> that's I see you're saying. Okay. kind of exercise. Uh, yeah, and uh, I tried this cake caveman workout where you actually throw boulders in, in Central Park and run around and climb trees. Great. So, uh, so in the end, uh, I, I tried all these things and it was a revelation just to see how different you feel when you're exercising. And did, you, did you notice a change? I did. Uh, you know, it gives me more energy and, uh, it, you know, it actually, the studies talk about how it affects your mind as well, which was interesting to me. It really sort of clarifies your thinking. I think the biggest thing for people people's health is stress, and that is the one thing that destroys most people's lives. So how did you tackle that? Well, I, had, I found a couple of good methods, because you're right, stress, terrible for the immune system, terrible for your heart. Uh, one thing is, I was interested in the research that says 
just holding hands uh, relieves stress. Uh, and holding, there was one study that said holding strangers' hands actually relieves stress. <laughs> that would stress me out. I would not like, I don't want to hold a stranger's hand. But I did hold my wife's hand, and it yeah. actually calms you down. If you're in a stressful situation, grab your spouse's Wait, do they mean hand. like this, though? Or do they mean like the interlocking one, like that? What oh, kind of I don't think the studies have been, no, that, oh, that's so see, relaxing. It's nice, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have that sort of effect, AJ. Yeah, there um, you go. Okay, but now, how did you, how were you able to determine which was, because there's so many research studies, man, what was bullshit and what wasn't? Did you, were you able to find your way through that? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but you're right, it's totally confusing, because uh, I think what happens is we fall prey to what I call the latest study syndrome, because a new study comes out that says, oh, bacon is good for you, uh, and that's so exciting, and it, <laughs> it justifies our eating bacon, so we get all excited, but we kind of ignore the 500 studies before right. that say bacon, not so good for you. So you've got to look at the totality of the evidence. The, um the, the thing, though, you're right about us being, you know, the, 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 the new study. The other thing that we do really well is look for the quick fix. That's true. The one thing that we can change, you know, I'll take this supplement or I won't take this supplement. This one doctor says take aspirin every day. This one says don't take aspirin every day. Is there something that is simple that you've noticed is a real game changer? Well, one thing that did change, uh, I, I was shocked by how bad sitting at your desk all day is for you. I mean, the research on this is really alarming. It, it's like one doctor told me sitting is the new smoking, uh, which is probably an overstatement, but not much. <laughs> uh, so even something as simple as getting up from your chair every hour and walking around for a couple of minutes has a huge impact on your health. I took it farther and I bought a treadmill and I put my computer on top of the treadmill and I walk slowly while I work. So I actually... That was this, your desk? Yeah, that's my desk. I've got a <laughs> treadmill desk. And I'm not the only one. There's a little small but growing movement of treadheads, they call themselves. Nice. Uh, and uh, it took me about 1,200 miles to write this book. And by the way, I am... <laughs> <laughs> I am. Did you seriously write the book the whole time? Oh, yeah. It was great. That's but slowly it. Yeah, or quickly, or how did you do that? Very slowly. I even, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard when you're jogging and sprinting to write. And I will tell you. I am a physically very lazy person, right. so uh, if I can do it, then I think anyone can. It's just you know, the taking that first step. Once you take that first step, you get energized. And you well, get your, into your it. diet thing, and here's here's why I ask. Because when I, 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 for no great political reason, I just decided, okay, I'm just going to go to a plant based diet because I didn't want to ignore the research, and and I felt infinitely better since I changed my diet. What I have noticed is how angry other people are that I've decided to get healthy. People are like <laughs> freaking out at just the concept of wanting to be healthy. Did you face any backlash trying to be healthy? I did, definitely. Uh, well, the problem was I was getting so into it, I was getting a little healthier than thou. So I would be like, <laughs> how can you be eating that? So I was on that side, but now yeah. I've calmed down. But you're right, the, the evidence for the plant-based diet is pretty strong, so I definitely went that way as well. I imagine your wife would have loved the idea of you immersing, getting immersed in the idea of being healthy as opposed to growing a beard and being biblical. Does she like this version of you now? She liked the, yeah, well, yeah, nothing can be as bad for her as the Bible book. <laughs> she, would, she wouldn't kiss me for six months because of that beard. Uh, but so this one, at, at the beginning, she, she was very excited. Uh, I think she thought I took it too far, which I probably did. Yeah. Uh, I took her to some extreme uh, exercise regimens that she hated. There's this one very popular in New York City called uh, Intensati, where you go and you work out and you scream affirmations at the same time. So that you, sounds like death to me. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Just like, get him! Amazing. That kind of admiration? That's exactly oh that kind of thing. Yeah, you and my wife would get along. <laughs> you, she hated it. Yeah, you would scream, uh, I want it. I want it. I really, really want it. And then, uh, yeah, uh, another one they screamed. This one was bizarre. They said, uh, in every way, Every day, I co-create my reality, which is not the catchiest slogan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a mouthful. I actually agree with the, the sentiment. Sure. We do co-create our reality. But uh, it's hard to get excited about that. In a if you want to be healthy, here's one way to do it. Drop to healthy, one man's humble quest for bodily perfection. It's so great to see you, AJ. Great Thank to you so see much. you, George. AJ Jenkins, everybody. We'll be right back.